From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi everybody, welcome to this special Cube Conversation. You know, with COVID-19 hitting, organizations really had to focus on business resiliency. And we've got two great guests here to talk about that, that topic. Bob Bender is the Chief Technology Officer at Founders Federal Credit Union. And he's joined by Jim Shook, who's the Director of Cybersecurity and Compliance Practice at Dell Technologies. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you. Thanks, Dave. Great, great to, to see you, there. thank you. So Bob, let's start with you. Give us a little bit of background on Founders and your role. Uh, Founders Federal Credit Union is a financial institution that has about 225,000 members, serving them in 30 different locations located in the Carolinas. I serve as Chief Technology Officer, uh, bringing in uh, the latest technology and cyber resilient uh, direction for the company. Great, and, and Jim, talk about uh, your role. Is this, a, is this a new role that was precipitated by COVID or is this something that's, that Dell has had for a while? Certainly relevant. It's actually, yeah, it's actually been around for, for a while, Dave. The organization invested in this space going back about five years, I founded the cybersecurity and compliance practice. So really my role is most of the time in the field with our customers, helping them to understand and solve their issues around the cyber resilience and cyber recovery field that we're talking about. Uh, but I also, to do that properly, spend a lot of time with organizations that are interested in that space. So it could be with an advisory partner, with the FBI, it might be a regulator, a particular group like Sheltered Harbor that we've worked with frequently. So it's just really, as you point out, taken off uh, first with ransomware a couple of years ago, and then with the recent challenges from work from home and COVID. So we're really helping out a lot of our customers right now. Bob, I've talked privately to a number of CIOs and CISOs, and, and many have said to me that, that you know, when COVID hit, that they're their business continuance was really much too de-archist. Uh, now you guys actually started your journey way back in, in 2017. And, and so I, I wonder if you could take us back a few years and, and what were the trends that you were seeing that precipitated you, you, know, you to go on this journey? Well, I think we, we actually saw the uh, malware, the uh, horizon there. And I'll take you back a little further because I, I just love that story is, you know, when we looked at the relationship of Dell EMC, uh, we, we talked to the 1% of the 1% and who was protecting their environment, their data capital, you know, the new uh, uh, critical asset in our environment. And it, Dell was, you know, EMC was the top of the line every time. When we, when we looked at the environment and what it required uh, put our assets under protection. Uh, again, we turned to Dell EMC and said, what, what, where do we need to go here? So, you know, you, you look at uh, this uh, Mecklenburg County, you look at the city of Atlanta, you look at Boeing, and I hate to use the examples, but some very large companies, some uh, really experienced companies were susceptible to this malware uh, attacks that we just we just knew ourselves it was going to change us. So the horizon was moving fast, uh, and and we we had to as well. Well, you're in a highly regulated industry as well. How did that factor into the the move? Well, you're exactly right. We we had on our budget, our capital budget horizon, you know, to do an air gap solution and we were we were looking at that so the regulatory requirements uh were requiring that the auditors were in every day talking about that and we just kept framing that and what we were going to do in that environment so uh you know we wanted to make sure as we did this purpose built data bunker um that we we looked at everything talked to the experts whether that was federal state regulation you know, you uh, mentioned Sheltered Harbor, uh, there's GDPR, all these things are changing. Who, how are we going to be able to sustain a forward look uh, as we stand this environment up? And, and you would think, uh, and, and we also uh, stood up a cybersecurity operations center. So we felt very confident in our run books and our incident response, and you would think that we would be ready to execute. But I'll, I'll, I'll share with you that uh, we reached out every which way and a friend called me and, and was actually in a live ransomware event and asked if I wanted to come on 
to their site to help them through that uh, uh, incident because we had some we had some uh, expertise on our staff uh, that they did not possess at that time. So going into that environment, spending 30 hours of the last 72 hours of an attack, uh, came we came back changed. We mm-hmm. came back changed and went to our board and our executive and said, we thought we knew what we were doing. But when you see the, the need to change from one to 10, to, you know, servers recovery to 300 in 72 hours, we just realized that our we had to change our plan. And we, we turned to uh, the investment we had already made and what we had looked at for some time and said, uh, you know, Dell EMC, we're, we're ready to look at that power protect uh, uh, cyber recovery solution. How can you stand this up very quickly? So, Jim, I, I, I mean, Bob was saying that you looked at the 1% of the 1%. So these guys are early adopters, yes. but, but anything you can add to that discussion in terms of, you know, what, what you saw precipitate sort of the activity, let's go pre-COVID, certainly ransomware was part of that. Was that the big catalyst that you saw? It really was. So when we started the practice, it was kind of following up on the Sony Pictures attack, which mm. only hit Sony, and uh, but it was unique in that it was trying to destroy an organization as opposed to just steal their data. So we had financial industries really leading the way, the regulators in the financial industry saying, gosh, these attacks could happen here and they would be devastating. So they kind of led the way. And as our practice continued, 2016 kind of became the year of ransomware and became more prevalent with the attackers getting more sophisticated and being able to monetize their efforts more completely with things like cryptocurrencies. And so as we come around and start talking to Bob, he still was well ahead of the game. People were talking about these issues, starting to grow concerned, but didn't really understand what to do. And Dave, I know we'll get to this a little bit later, but even today, there's quite a bit of disconnect many times between the business understanding the risks of the business and then the technology, which really is the business now, but making those pieces fit together and understanding where you need to improve to secure against these risks is a difficult process. Well, and I think I, I'd love to come back to Bob and, and truly try to understand sort of how you pitched this to the board, if you will, how you made the business case. You know, to, to Jim's point, the adversaries are highly capable. Uh, it's a lucrative business. I always talk to my kids about ROI, numer- numerator and denominator. You know, if, if you can raise the, the, the denominator, that's going to lower the value. And that's kind of the business that you're in is making it less attractive for the bad guys, but how did you present this to the board? Was it a board level discussion? It, it was exactly. Uh, we brought uh, Dell EMC, Power Protect Cyber Recovery uh, Solution to them and said, not only not only you're experiencing and seeing in the news daily these attacks in our regions, but we have actually gone out into an environment and watched that attack play out. Not only that is when we stepped away and, and, and we ran through some tabletops with them and we, we stepped away and we said, you know, are you okay? Do you know how it got in? Are you prepared for, you know, to protect now and detect that again? Within 30 days, they were, were hit again by the same uh, ransomware attacks and, and hackers. So I hate to say this, but uh, I probably fast forwarded on the business case and in the environment, the horizon around me, uh, players, they were they they kind of made my case for me. So I really appreciated that top down approach. The board invested, the executive invested. They understood what was at risk. They understood that you know you don't have weeks to recover in the financial in- institution. You know you're 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 dealing with thousands, hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. So uh, it, it made my case. We had studied. We have talked to the experts, we knew what we wanted. We went to Dell EMC and said, I have, I have six months and here's my spend. And that's from equipment hitting our uh, uh, col- colos and our data centers, standing up, standing up the run books and it's fully executed. And I wanted an environment that was not only holistic, uh, we built it out to cover all of our data and that I could stand up the data center within that environment. I didn't need another backup solution. I needed a cyber recovery 
environment, a lifestyle change, if you'd say. It's got to be different than your BCP DR. While it, it inherits some of those relationships, we, we uh, fund it with employees separately. We treat it, the incident response separately, and, and it is really benefited. And I think we've really grown and, and uh, we continue to stress that at, uh, to educate ourselves, not only at the board level, but, but a bottom-up approach as well with the employees because they're part of that human firewall as well. well well i mean i think you've seen this where a lot of organizations they they do a checkbox on backup or as i was saying before mm -hmm. dr but then in this world of digital when a problem hits it's like mm -hmm. uh-oh you know we're not ready so so i wonder jim if we can get into this solution that that bob has been talking about the, the dell emc power protect cyber recovery solution there's a mouthful there and you got the you got the power branding going on so what what is that all about talk to us about the tech that's behind this yeah it's it's something that we've developed over time and really kind of added to in our capabilities so at its core power protect cyber recovery is going to protect your most critical data and applications so that if there is a cyber attack a ransomware or destructive attack they're safe from that attack. And you can take that data and recover the most important components of the business. And to do that, we, we do a number of things, Dave. The, the solution itself takes care of all these things, but number one is we, we isolate the data so that it, you can't get there from here. If you're a bad actor, even an insider, you can't get to the data because of how we've architected it. And so we'll use that to update the critical applications and data then we'll lock that data down. People will say, use terms like immutability or retention lock. So we'll lock it down in that isolated environment and then we'll analyze it. So it's one thing to be able to protect the data with the solution. It's another to be able to say that what I have here in my data vault, in my air gapped isolated environment is clean. It's good data. And if there was an attack, I could use that to recover. And then of course, over time, we've built out all the capabilities. We've made it easier to deploy, easier to manage. We have very sophisticated services for organizations that need them. And then we can do a much lighter touch for organizations that have a lot of their, their built-in capabilities. So that at its core, it's a recover capability so that if there was an attack that was unfortunately successful, you don't lose your business. You're not at the mercy of the criminals to pay the ransom. You have this data and you can recover. All right, so Bob, talk to us about sort of your objectives going into this, you, you know, it's more than a project. I mean, it really is a transformation uh, of your resiliency infrastructure, I'll call it. But what, what were your objectives going in? I mean, a lot of companies are, are reacting, you know, and that's, it's like, you don't have time to really think. Uh, but so what are the objectives? How long did it take to walk us, paint a picture of the project and what, what it looked like, you know, some of the high level milestones that you were able to achieve? Well, I think several times uh, uh, Dell EMC was able to talk us off the edge, you know, where it really got complicated. You know, the foundation services is just one of your more difficult conversations. One of the top three, it definitely, you you know, patch management, notification, and how are you going to rehydrate that data, keeping that window very small to reduce that risk almost completely uh, as you move. Uh, I think other other areas supply is that we really wanted to understand our data and and i think we had we had we we're on a road to achieving that it was important that if we were going to put it into the vault it had a purpose uh and if we weren't going to put it in a vault vault let's let's see why that why that would uh why would we choose to do that why would we have this data why would we have this laying around because that that's a story of our members you know 225 stories of their the ability to move into financial security that story is is now ours to protect not only do we want to serve you uh, in your in the services in the industry and make sure you you achieve what you're trying to but now we have that story about you that we have to protect just as passionately and and we had that um just i think that was two of the biggest things i think the third is that we wanted to make sure uh, we could be successful moving forward. And I'll share with you that in the history of the credit, you know, we achieved one of the biggest projects here in the last two years. That umbrella of the cyber recovery solution protection was immediate. We plugged in a significant uh, project of our data capital 
and it's automatically covered. So I take that out of the vendor uh, responsibility, which is very difficult to validate, to, to hold accountable sometimes. And it comes back under our control into kind of this, this purpose-built uh, data security and cyber resilient you know, business strategy. That's a business strategy for us is to maintain that presence. So everything new, we, we, we feel that we're sized that we there's not going to be a rip and replace a huge architectural change because we did have this as an objective at the very beginning. Jim, when you go into a project like this, what do you tell customers in terms of things that they really should be focused on to to have a successful outcome? Yeah, I'm going to say first day. Not everybody has a Bob Bender, so we have a lot of these conversations where we have to really kind of start from the beginning and and work through it with our customers. If you approach this the right way, it's really about the business. So what are the key processes for your business? It can be different from a bank than from a hospital than from a school. Board. So what are the key things that you do? And then what's the tech that supports that and underlies those processes? That's what we want to get into the vault. So we'll have those conversations early on. I think we have to help a lot of uh, organizations through the risks too. So understand the risk landscape, why doing one or two little things aren't really going to protect you from the full spectrum of attackers. And then the third piece really is, okay, where do we start? How do we, how do we get moving on this process? How do we get victories so that the board can understand and the business can understand and we can continue to progress along the way? So it's always a bit of a journey, but getting that first step and getting some understanding there on the threat landscape along with why we're doing this is very important. So Bob, what about any speed bumps that you you, you encountered? Uh, you know, what were some of those? Is oh, you know, no project is ever perfect. What would you run into? How'd you deal with it? Well, I would I would say the foundation services were a major uh, uh, part of our time. So it really helped for uh, Dell EMC to come and explain to us and and look at that that perimeter and how our data is is brought into that and size that for us and, and make sure it's sustainable. So that, that is definitely could be a speed bump that we had to overcome. Uh, but today, because of those lifts, those efforts invested, the run books, the uh, increase in, in new products, new data, as our, our business organically grows, is a non-event. It's very plug and play. Uh, and that's what we wanted from the start. So I, I Again, you go back to that conversation of one percent of the one percent and saying who protects you. Uh, we did. We followed that. We stayed with the partner we trusted. Uh, the horizon uh, holistically has come back and paid for itself again and again. So, you know, speed bumps. Uh, uh, we just, we just aren't. We're just enjoying that we were early adapters and we knew that. Uh, you, you know, there. Uh, I don't want to throw anybody out there, but you look about two weeks ago, there was a major announcement about uh, an attack that was successful. And they they got them with ransomware and the company paid the ransom. But it wasn't for the ransomware, it was for the data they stole so that they would delete it. So we these that's again why we wanted this environment is we needed time to react in the case that these these malwares are growing much faster than we're capable of understanding how they're attacking, so it's a now it's one two punch. You know where's it going to be? Where's it going to end? Well, we don't have to. Uh, we're not going to likely be patient zero, but we're also not going to have to be up at night worrying that there's a new strain out there. We have a little time now that we have this uh, secure environment that we know has a, has that you know air gap. Uh, solution and that was built with the regulatory uh, consideration, with the legal considerations, with the data capital, with the uh, uh, review of malware and, and and such. You can go back in time and say, okay, scan this, see if I see if I have a problem. So, again, the partnership is while we focus on our business, they're focusing on the strategy for the future, and that's what we need. We we can't be in both places at once. How, how long did the project take kind of, kind of from the point at which you agreed, you know, signed the contract to where you felt like you were getting value out of the solution? Uh, uh, six months. And, and, really? I, and I, 
we were adamant. I mean, I put it off for a year and a half. That's two budget cycles, basically, is what it felt. And then I had to come back and ask for that money back because we felt so passionate that our data, our critical data, didn't need to be at that risk any longer. So it was a very tight timeline. And again, product product on on prem within six months. And there was a lot of things going on there. So I just wasn't idle during that time. I was having a conversation with Dell EMC about our, our relationship and our contracts. Let's build that cyber resilience into the contract. Let's now we've got this, you know, uh, power protect cyber recovery environment. Let's build it here where you also agree to bring on uh, extra hardware or product if I need that. Let's talk about me being on a, a technology advisory panel so I can tell you where the regulate uh, uh, the horizon of the regulations are going so you can start to build that in. Let's talk about the executive board reporting of your products and how that can enable us. Because, you know, we're not just talking about cyber and and protecting your data. We're talking about back then 60% of your keep the lights on IT person was spent with auditors talking about how we were failing. You know, this product helped us get ahead of that to now where we're data analytic, we're uh, just analysts that can come back to the business table and say, we can stand that up very quickly, not only because of the hardware and, and the platform solution we have, but it is now covered with the cyber resilience uh, of, this, of the cyber uh, security uh, uh, recovery platform. So, the, you know, I want to ask you about analytics. Do you feel as though you've been able to go from what is generally viewed as a, as a reactive mode into something that is more anticipatory or, or proactive using analytics? Oh, I, I definitely do. We, we pull analytics daily and, and sometimes hourly to make sure we're achieving our KPIs and, our, and, and looking at the KRIs. We do risk assessments from the industry to make sure if uh, uh, our controls layer de of defenses are there and, and that they will still work what we stood up three years ago. So I definitely think we've gone from an ad hoc rip and replace approach to transformation into a more of a, a threat hunting type of approach. So our cybersecurity operations center for us is very, very advanced and is always looking for opportunities, not only to improve, to do self-assessments, but we're very active. Uh, we're monetizing that with a QSO arm of the credit union to go out and help others where we're successful. So others that may not have that staff. And, and it's, very, it's very rewarding for us. And I, I hate to say it sometimes is at their expense of being in, in involved in the event of a ransomware attack or a malware uh, event. We learn so much, uh, the gaps we have, but we could take this back, create run books and make the industry stronger uh, and, and against these type of attacks. Well, so Jim, I mean, how you said earlier, not every company has a Bob Bender. How common is it that you're able to see customers go from that reactive mode into one that is, is proactive? Is that rare? Is it, is it increasingly common? I mean, it can't be 100%, but, but what are you seeing as trends? It's in, it's more common now. I mean, you think of, again back to to Bob. That's three plus years ago, and he's been a tireless supporter and tireless worker in his industry and in his in his community in the, in the cyber area. And efforts like those of Bob's have helped so many other organizations. I think understand the risks and take further action. I think too. You know, Bob talks about some of the challenges with getting started. You know, in that three year time frame, Power Protect Cyber Recovery has become more productized, our practice is more mature, we have more people, more help, you know, we're still doing things out there that, that nobody else is touching. And so we've made it easier for organizations that have an interest in this area to deploy and deploy quickly and to get quick value from their projects. So I think between that, some kind of the ease of use, and then also there's more understanding, I think, of what the bad actors can do and, and those threats. This isn't about somebody maybe having an outage for a couple of hours. This is about the very existence of a business being threatened that if you're attacked, you might not come back from it. And there've been some significant yeah. examples of that. You might lose hundreds of millions of dollars. So as that awareness has grown, more and more people have kind of come on board and, and been able to leverage learnings from people like Bob who started much earlier. Well, I, I can see the, the CFO saying, okay, I get it. 
I have no choice. We're, we're, we're going to be attacked. We know that. I got to buy the insurance. You got me. But I can see the CFO saying, is there any way we can get like additional value out of this? Can we, can we use it to improve our processes and cut our costs? Or can we, can we monetize this in some way? Bob, Bob, what's the reality there? Are you able to find other sources of value beyond just an insurance policy? Definitely, definitely, Dave, you're, you're exactly right. We're able to go out there and, and take these run books and really start to educate what cyber resilience means and what air gap means, what regulatory, what, what are you required to do? And then what is your responsibility to do? And when you take these exercises that are offered and you, and you go through them, and then you change that perspective and go through a live event with other folks and see that, you know, after 60 hours of folks being up straight, it, it really changes your view to understand that this is, we're never going to, there's, there's no finish line here. We're always going to be trying to improve the product. And why not pick somebody uh, that you're comfortable with and, and, I'll, and, and you trust. And I think that's the biggest win we have from this is that was a Dell EMC uh, partnership with us. It was a very comfortable fit. We moved from, you know, backup and recovery into cyber resilience. And, and cybersecurity as a business strategy with that partner, with our partner, Dell, and uh, it, it hasn't failed us. And, and so it's, it's, it's very, very comforting. We're talking about quality of life for the employee. You know, keep, you, know you, you hear that, keep the lights on. And they've really turned into professionals to really understand what security means uh, differently today and what that quality of data is. You know, reports aren't just reports. They're, they're, their data capital, their data, the currency, new currency today of, of the value we bring. So how are we going to use that? How are we going to monetize that? Uh, it's, it's changing it. And then I, I hate to jump ahead, but uh, we, we, we had our perimeters at, at 1% of our workforce uh, remote and all of a sudden COVID-19 takes on a different challenge when, when we thought we were doing really good. And next, we had to move 50% of our employees out in five days. And because of that Dell uh, EMC holistic approach, we were protected every step of the way. We didn't lose any time saying we bought the wrong control, the wrong hardware, the wrong software. It was a very comfortable approach. Uh, the run books held us. Our, our security posture stayed solid. It was, again, very just, it's been very rewarding. Well, I was, that was my next question, actually, is because you started oh, the journey. No, no, it's okay. No, because you started the journey early, were you able to respond to COVID, you know, in a more facile manner? It sounds like you just you know, went right in, but, but, but there's nuance there, right? Because you got now 50% or more of the workforce working at home. You got endpoint security to worry about. You got, you got identity access management. And, and, and it sounds like you were kind of no problem. We've we've got this covered. Is am I getting that right? You're you're exactly right, Dave. We test our endpoints daily. Uh, we make sure that we understand what what residue of data is where. And when we we saw that employee shift to a safe environment, our most uh, you know consideration at that time. Uh, we felt very comfortable that the controls we had in place again. Dell and their business partners, we we're gonna we we're gonna hold true and be solid, and we test those metrics daily. I get reports back telling me, you know, what's missing in patch management, what's missing in a backup, what's what you know, and I'll go back to uh, keeping BCP and and cybersecurity separate. In the vault, we take a approach and uh, of recovering systems daily. And now that goes from maybe a 2% testing rate almost to 100% annually. So again, to your point, COVID was a real setback, but it wasn't, we just executed the same run books we had been maturing all along. So it was very comfortable for our employees. It was very comfortable for our, our IT structure. We did not feel uh, we did not feel any service delays or outages because of that. And, that, and that's in the day when you have to produce that data, secure that data, uh, you know, every minute of every day of every year, it's very comforting to know uh, it's going to happen.
you don't you don't push that button and it's, nothing happens. It, it's it's executed as planned. Jim, did did you see a huge spike in demand for your services as a result of COVID? And and how did you handle it? I mean, you got a you guys got a zillion customers. How, how did you respond and, and make sure that you were taking care of everybody? We really did see a big spike, Dave. I think there were a couple of things going on. You know, as Bob points out, the security posture changes very quickly when you're sending people to work from home, more people remotely, you've expanded or kind of obliterated your perimeter, you're not ready for it. And so security becomes even more important and, and more top of mind. So, you know, with Power Protect Cyber Recovery, we can go in and we can protect that most those most critical applications. So organizations are really looking at their full security posture. What can we do better to detect and protect against these threats? And, and that's really important. Uh, for us, we're focusing on what happens when those fail. And with that extension and people going home and then the threat actors getting even more active, the possibilities of those failures become more possible and the, the risks are just in front of everybody. So I think it was a combination of all of those things. Many, many customers came to us very quickly and said, tell us more about what you're doing here. How does it fit into our infrastructure? What does it protect us against? How quickly can we deploy? And so there has been a huge uptake in, in interest. And we're fortunate in that, you know, as you pointed out early on, Dave, I, we invested early here. I'm five years into the practice. We've got a lot of people, very mature, very sophisticated in this area, a lot of passion among our team, and we could go take care of all those customers. Bob, if you had a mulligan uh, thinking about this project, what, what would you do differently if you, if you had a chance to do it over? I would, I would, I think I would start earlier. I think that was probably the biggest thing I regret in that realizing that you don't have, you need to understand that you may not have the time you think you do. And luckily uh, we came to our senses, we executed, and I got to say it was, it was with common sense, comfortable products that we already understood. We didn't have to learn a whole new game plan. So, so, you know, I don't, I don't worry about that. I don't worry about the sizing of the product because we did it, we did it, I feel correctly going in and it fits us uh, as we move forward and, and we're growing uh, at an increased rate that we may not expect. It's plug and play. Uh, I, again, I, I, I would just say, stay involved, get involved, know that what we know today about malware and these attacks are only going to get more complicated. And that's where I need to spend my time, my group, become experts there. Let, why I really cherish the Dell EMC uh, relationship is they, from the very beginning, they've always been very passionate on delivering products that uh, recover and protect. Uh, and now we're cyber resilient. I, I don't have to challenge that. You pay for what you get for what you what you get, and I just got to say, I, I don't think there's much other than I would have started earlier. So start today. Okay. So don't put it off. <laughs> you said earlier though, you're you're never done, right? You never are in this industry. So yeah. what's what's your roadmap look like? Where do you want to go from here with this uh, with this capability? I, I I definitely want to keep educating my staff. Uh, keep training them, keep working with Dell. Again, I, I tell you, they're such forward thinking as a company, uh, they save me that investment. And so, so if you're looking at part of the investment, it's got to be, are you with a partner that's forward thinking? So we definitely want to uh, mature this, um, make sure, challenge it, keep challenging, keep working with Dell and their products to deliver more. You, again, we go to the federal and state uh, regulatory requirements. You go to the uh, sheltered harbor, the ASET testing from the NCUA regulators, uh, just uh, software asset management. You can keep on going down the line. This product uh, keeps, I hate to say it's kind of like the iPhone. Uh, you know, do you think about how many products the iPhone has now uh, made not relevant? I, I don't even own a flashlight, I don't think. This is kind of what the Dell. Uh, product line brings to me is that I, I can trust they're going to keep me relevant so I can stay at the business table and de design products that help our members today.
Jim, how about from Dell's perspective, the, the sort of roadmap, you know, without giving away any confidential information, wh where do you want to take this? I mean, I, I, you know, we talk about air gaps, we talk about, I and mean, I've seen, you know, I remember watching that documentary, Zero Days, and, and hearing him say, well, we got through an air gap, no problem. So analytics obviously plays a role in this, machine intelligence, machine learning, AI. Where, where, do you, where does Dell want to take this, this capability? Where do you see that going? We're going to, you know, we've got some things in mind and then we're always going to listen to our customers and see where the regulations are going to. And, you know, thus far we've, we've been ahead of those uh, with the help of people like Bob. I think where we have a huge advantage, Dave, is with PowerProtect Cyber Recovery, it's a product. So we've got people who are dedicated to this full time. You know, we have a maturing organization in the field to deliver it and to service it. And having something as a product like that really enables us to have roadmaps and support and things that customers need to really make this effective for them. So as we look out kind of on the product and, and thanks for your reminder, I don't want to risk uh, saying anything here, I'm going to get in trouble for, we kind of look at things in three paths. One is we want to increase the ability for our customers to consume the product. So they want it in different forms. They might want it in appliances, in the cloud, virtual, all of those things are, are things that we've developed and continue to develop. They want more capability, so they want the product to do more things. They want it to be more secure and keeping up. As you mentioned, machine learning with the analytics is a big key for us. Um, even, even more mundane things like operational information makes it easier to keep the vault secure and understand what's going on there without having to get into it all the time. So those are really valuable. And then our, our third point, really, we can't do everything. And so we have great partners, whether they're doing delivery, offering, cyber recovery as a service or providing secure capabilities like our relationship with uh, Unisys. They have a stealth product that is a, a zero knowledge, um, zero trust product that helps us to secure some of the connections to the vault. We'll keep iterating on all of those things and being innovative in this space, working with the regulators, doing things. Bob's mentioned a couple of times, Sheltered Harbor. We've been working with them for two years to have our product endorsed to their specification, something that nobody else is even touching. So we'll continue along all those paths, but really following our customers' lead in addition to maybe going some places that they haven't thought about before. It's great, guys. Uh, you know, I have, to, I have to sort of share that when you talk to SecOps pros, you ask them what their biggest challenge is, and they'll say lack of talent, lack of skills. And so this is a great example, Jim, you were mentioning it, you've productized this. This is a great example of a technology company translating you know, uh, uh, IT labor costs into R&D. And removing those, so you know customers can spend time, you know, running their business. Uh, Bob and Jim, thanks so much for coming on the Cube. Great story. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Bob. All right, and thank yep. you, everybody, for watching. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube. We'll see you next time.